If you raise mealworms or are thinking about raising mealworms, uh, I want you to stick around. I'm going to walk through how I collect temperature and humidity data uh, and then use that data. And in this case, I'm going to walk through how I've used it to manage the changes in my farm uh, along with just regular day-to-day -day activities. Just to set the stage, I walked out of what used to be that room there, this wall was solid, what used to be the insect room, the mealworm room. Uh, and now I am in an unfinished space from a mealworm perspective. It's not ready for them yet. Drywall needs to be uh, mud and taped and painted. Uh, but this entire room is going to be filled with more mealworms. And so what I've had to do is manage the temperature and humidity, temperature with this guy, humidity in general, uh, using the data that I can collect and a couple different sensors. And I want to walk through those sensors now. I have not been sponsored or paid uh, for either of the two products that I'm going to show you, three total, uh, two different companies. Um, I just have used them for years uh, and really rely on them to give me good accurate data uh, that helps me manage things in the farm. So the first thing we're going to talk about is Sensor Push. So Sensor Push uh, is a product I've used since 2017, long time, long, long time. Uh, it's a pretty simple, small device. Uh, it does temperature and humidity and they have an app. And what that app does is it uh, will track this data so that you can see it over time. Here is that app. So this is one view. Uh, so right now I have three different sensors, three different, these guys uh, in the farm. And so I'm getting three different readings. This is the main sensor that's in the insect room or the mealworm room right now. Uh, and so it's the one that I've primarily been using just to monitor things. And then these other two uh, I, I've had, uh, I've used in my office, I've used in various locations, uh, or it's been in the mealworm farm itself. Um, right now, all three of these are in the large room that's now just one giant room. So as I walk into the mealworm room, I'll show you where I place this temperature sensor. Right there. Pretty simple, straightforward. I've got it basically in the middle of the vertical space, top and bottom. You're obviously going to have some differential there, but uh, middle of the road, middle of the room uh, is what I'm tracking at this point. And so what I've done is as I've transitioned this space, and by transition, I mean taking that wall down, I now have to heat and cool and manage this entire space. And so I've used that sensor as my kind of starting point. Uh, it monitored the temperature in here for months and months and months. And once I took this wall down, I used that sensor to track over time what was happening to the temperature in here. And so let me show you what that view looks like in the app. And here we go. So as you can see here, this is a week view. You've got uh, hour, day, hour, day, week, month, year uh, options to see. And so this is the week view over the last week. And what you can see is... Um, the average temperature, that's nice to see, automatically shows you that. Um, minimum temperature, maximum temperature. Um, and what you can see around in here is two different changes. Uh, and that occurred because I opened this wall up and adjusted temperature. And so what it showed me was over time, over the last week, it got colder outside. And so the temperature in here started to lower. This is when I removed the wall. And then I turned the heat on and up to 80 because I didn't know what was going to happen. And so you see this big spike uh, up to about 81 would be my guess. Uh, and then I realized that's it's staying there, right? It's not going down. This dip was probably because I turned on an exhaust fan um, to, to get fresh air in here uh, and to ventilate. And so then it caught back up and again, stayed right around there and then got hot. Uh, and so what I did is I turned the thermostat down on the heater um, and it just it went down, as you can see. Right. And so then it recovered and it's been right in this 77.9 area uh, since then. And so what that sensor allowed me to do is to make sure that this back area now. So back there is where that sensor's at. Back in that area, it's maintaining the temperature of 77, 78 degrees. Uh, and so having that data available, I don't have to be here to watch it. I don't have to mess with it. It collects that data. Um, and so having that available has allowed me to figure out what I need to set this thermostat to, uh, to maintain the temperature that I want. Uh, I don't have to rely on the thermostat that's here in the middle of the room right now. If I walk this way, I can show you. It's sitting right there. Eventually it's going to be 
somewhere else. I have to figure that out. Um, but as of right now, these sensors are helping me understand what I need to adjust, if anything. And so initially my temp was too high because I was kind of a little worried that it was going to get too cold um, and I needed to combat heating this area uh, and getting it up to a decent temperature. I also have sensors. Um, there's one back here. Uh, and what that allowed me to do is kind of see that this area was maintaining its temperature. So it's been 70, 71 over here uh, in the new part. Uh, and that's happening for a couple reasons. Uh, one, my intake for fresh air is now behind this tool, uh, tool uh, tray. It opens up when the exhaust fan is on and pulls in outside air, which right now is cold. Uh, and also, just from a time perspective, I have not been able to put the bat insulation on the other side of this wall. And you can see some light coming through there. I still need to tape all these seams. Uh, and so it's not 100% insulated, uh, and it's a little cooler over here. I'm okay with that. It's maintaining the temperature. It's not getting colder. Um, and I've got a large list of things I need to get done. And so that's going to happen at some point. Uh, but right now, it's not concerning because I have the data available to me. Um, now, this little guy works on Bluetooth. Uh, there is an additional, I believe they call it a gateway. Uh, it's an additional product, uh, an additional cost. But it allows you to monitor all of this remotely. And here's that device. And as you can see, it's got quite a bit of dust on it. Um, I intentionally didn't clean this off to make it all fancy and nice and beautiful for you. Uh, I'm showing you this because I've had this for a while and have used this device. And so it's got a nice layer of dust on it um, because things are dusty in a mealworm farm. And uh, what this thing does is it connects to the internet mm -hmm. and it uploads that data that it collects from all three sensors in my case, or multiple sensors, uh, if you've got more, uh, and uploads it to the web so that the app can get real-time feedback to you uh, anytime. That has been super helpful to me uh, because one time I left on vacation, uh, the temperature started to go through the roof and I got a notification on my phone. You can set alerts, humidity and temperature min and max levels. And if it goes above that temperature, or below that temperature or humidity, uh, you'll get an alert on your phone uh, and it will tell you. So you don't have to monitor it all the time. It will send you that notification. Love that. And so what that allowed me to do was to respond and, and tackle that issue instead of getting my temperature so high that I potentially would have lost my entire colony. So I'm a big fan of sensor push. Um, the other tool that I use is this Inkbird sensor. And so it also has temperature and humidity there on the right in the middle. Uh, it's got your air quality indicator in the upper right. But what I really like about this one is the CO2 monitor and then the particulates. And I've had this sensor for years as well. I want to say two to three years. Um, and I'm, I'm very happy with it so far. Uh, so the CO2 is nice because it lets me see uh, whether the fresh air that's coming in is enough, do I need to adjust that, etc. And the particulates are really nice because, like right now when I'm speaking, the particulates in the air are low. There's no frass in the air. There's no dust in the air. Um, there is a little bit, but it's not uh, to the level that's concerning. When those particulates get higher is when I'm in here working in the farm. And so what that sensor allows me to do is it allows me to record these videos, for example, uh, without wearing the mask because I know that the air is clean right now. If there was frass in the air, that thing would be up uh, in like the 40s to 50s and potentially higher. Uh, and so that Inkbird sensor really allows me to see is my ventilation working to make sure I've got fresh, fresh oxygen in here for myself and the insects. Uh, and where's the particulate level at? Um, so all of these things together have really helped me uh, manage the change here and keep track of what's going on to be much more confident and around temperature stuff. So I didn't have to come over here in the middle of the night and check to see, you know, it's 21 degrees outside a couple days ago at night, come in here and look at this manually to see how the temps are doing. I just looked at these guys the next morning. Um, and I would have gotten an alert overnight if the temperatures dropped or had issues. Uh, and so these guys, uh, one battery, I've replaced the battery maybe once a year. I uh, really like that. Uh, the Inkbird plugs in, um, and so it's hardwired, uh, so that it's always on. But these two products are really nice. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Again, not sponsored, uh, not paid for this. These are just devices that I use that I think would be good for you guys to utilize, uh, just so you have that data available to troubleshoot, and as changes occur in the, in the weather around you, uh, so that you can adjust for the mealworms that you're growing.